Ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the Shelbyville Golden Eagle Football Show. We're glad you guys could join us today. I'm Jim Fuller. I'll be your co-host, and it's my pleasure to be working today with a very happy, I'm sure, head coach, Jason Hardy. Jason, a great, great night last night. I know you were a little apprehensive about uh, going in, uh, into the... Uh, to into um, excuse me folks i got a little distracted there because our <laughs> monitor went off in front of us but we're still on there i know you were a little uh, apprehensive about going into lawrence county last night but it worked out well for you oh definitely you know when you're in the season and going and playing a big game and uh, on the road to lawrence county it's always tough and you know we were we were just hoping we'd go down and play well and kind of start out a little bit shaky but uh overall I had a good night and uh, you know very very happy for the kids and the community of several uh you know, first time I think in 17, 18 years that uh, they've won the district in football. So you know, that's a that's a big step for for our community and our football program. Did Lawrence County do anything different than what you kind of expected going in? No, you know, we knew they were wing team going to run the ball, and that was they're going to be their focus. And uh, you know, we did a good job shutting down the run early. And uh, you know, they're not a really pass heavy team, and when they have to pass, I thought that was a, an advantage for us. And so. Uh, that way, had a good defensive game plan, stuck to it, and uh, really worked out well for us. And offensively, uh, again, scored a lot of points last night. Yeah, we did. You know, we uh, moved the ball well and good balance of running and, and passing the ball again. Kids played well and, uh, you know, ended a couple of drives with some field goals. I'd like to see them get touchdowns on the board, but, uh, you know, when you put 40 points on the board, it's hard to do too much complaining. You touched on this a moment ago, but uh, obviously that makes you the district championships and, and really puts you in a good place, I think, in the playoffs. It does. You know, the main thing about that district championship is it, it allows you to be a one seed, and we've gotten a one seed, and uh, get to play at home. And, uh, you know, I've been around left to know that home field advantage is a big thing. Uh, got a tough draw. You know, when you, anytime we're playing a, a district opponent in the first round, it's kind of tough. But, uh, you know, we are going to be set up, at least on the bracket, to, to have home games if you can keep on winning, and, and, and that's nice. Mm -hmm. Okay, all right. Well, it's you're, you're right where you want to be. Uh, you finished the regular season at seven and three, uh, and as we've talked about a couple of times on the show, uh, really made a big turnaround early in the season. All your losses came early in the season. Yeah, you know, we, the three losses with we had a three-game losing streak, and one of those two to Oklahoma, and. Uh, you know, our kids really turned it around. We had a kind of a, a meeting with the seniors and said, uh, these last these last few weeks, five five weeks, we had five district opponents, and we said we're going to take each one a, one at a time, and that we felt like if we could win out, that we'd have a chance, and uh, you know, everything fell into place, and uh, you know, worked out well. And uh, right before we went on there, we did get a look at the TWSAA uh, uh, brackets there. Uh, Shelbyville will be playing uh, Tullahoma at home this uh, this Friday night. We'll talk about that a little in on just a little bit. Uh, right now, we're going to go into the first quarter of last night's game against Long. Obviously, we uh, kicking off to them, kind of pooch kick it up right there, and uh, like seen it a little bit deeper, but uh, starting at the 35-yard line. And here's the wing tee, first play out of the gate, and you, know, you can see we got a lot of kids getting to the football. And uh, I knew it was going to be one of those things that we we need to play well on first downs and, and make the make the third down plays a lot longer. Do you see a lot of the teams that are playing the wing tee? Well, it's just our second second one, Franklin County and uh, and Lawrence County both, and luckily we've had pretty pretty good success defensively against both of them. But uh, you know, it's, when you don't see it very often, it's kind of tough to be prepared. And your defense overall just really stepped up here as a well. Uh, they have, and it's not just been one; it's been several of them. And uh, you know, tackling's vastly improved. Here's a little bit. We've had, first quarter. I, 
these punt returns made me nervous. We, we should have fielded that, called a fair catch, but we don't need to be letting it hit the ground. There's always a chance for it to bounce up and, and hit you on the leg or something. Do a little moving around here and, you know, try to get to the edge right here with Tyler Eddings. He's got some speed to burn. And, you know, I, I thought they did a good job coming out and saying, no, we're not going to run wide on them. That's one of the few plays that we really can, can get the edge. And uh, we, needed to, we needed to probably turn the ball up field a little bit more here in the first quarter. We're going to see uh, some of these runs. And probably here's one of them right here. I believe he just stayed, you know, it's the first down, but I believe he's still trying to bounce it out a little bit too quick right there. Overall, it looks like you might have the advantage, though, on uh, team in team speed, Coach. Yeah, I thought we did. And, you know, but when, when you do that, they kind of game plan and make sure that you're not going to run it outside of them. So we got to adjust and hit it upfield. Good job right here by Mason making a good decision. And, that's one of the things we've talked about with him and you know being a sophomore is always got to make the, the right decisions no need to force things if you don't have to and your quarterback seems to be playing with a lot of poise and confidence now he definitely is you know just start out there a little option play and gets it out there and uh, making making good decisions goes a long way and i think for the last month our negative plays have been very minimal and that's that's huge Here's a good good example of trying to – he's running hard, but he's trying to bounce it out a little bit too quick right there. And sometimes you just want to get – we got a no gain. We'd like to get a two-yard gain. <laughs> and it's Dallas Castleman. I'm running the ball and bring him out and give him a break. And Michael Eddings here. And that's what we talk about going north and south right there. You know, a lot quicker to get an end zone yeah, when you're running yeah, north and south. Yes, it is. Micah Thompson putting the extra point through. Got a little bit of leakage coming through there by Lawrence County. And it's always scary on those extra points when people come up the middle. You're going to see here a little bit better kick, a little bit deeper, and uh, good coverage right there. So, once again, you start 30. Uh, ideally, your life want to start in the 20, but if you can start in the 30, that's a, that's a long way to go in high school football. Just a great job our defensive line. I see Will drawn there and Trevor Tribe, and Dallas Castle, Malik Tronger. Uh, Coach uh, Jackie Blosser's done an excellent job with our defensive line. It's been one of the reasons we've uh, been more successful on defense. Get them down here in another third and, third and medium. They're trying to hit the edge on us, and just I, I feel like that's, that's our advantage. Um, with our team speed, us coming up, it's, it's tough to get the edge on some of these guys. And here's another here's another one of those punt returns that, once again, it's, it's critical. And here we kind of get lucky on this play. Um, they punt it to us, and it hits them first, and then hits us, and the ball's everywhere. And it's one of those very dangerous. That makes for some anxious moments. Uh, very dangerous right there. And uh, just kind of get lucky that it hits them. Tyler Eddings kind of gets shaken up on the play right here, and he was okay. He kind of got his back bent up a little bit and trying to feel the ball. But, you know, those are things going into the playoffs that we've got to shore up. Uh, we, we need to be feeling the punts better. And uh, Lawrence County's credit, they've got their defensive line very aggressive. And right there, 42 just gets penetration. You know, that's one of the few plays of a lot for a loss we've had. Quick screen to Trail Carpenter, and he gets us three or four. And third and short here, or excuse me, third and about six or seven makes it third and short. And we come back here and really just need to get the first down right here. And we talked about, just talked about Mason making good decisions at the quarterback level. And right here kind of goes to more of a sophomore decision instead of the way he's been playing. We do a good job getting the edge and really like to see him just dump it there to, to the guy in the flat and get the first down and he kind of floats one and, and, and they pick it off and uh, you know you're on the road you don't want to have turnovers early in the game. Great job right here by our defense trying to go a little double move and we get a sack and uh, cause a fumble and they go from having great field position to second and 20 something.
just you can kind of see there, not a lot of running room. And once again, that goes back to uh, the defensive line doing a great job. It's always big when you can stop them on a, after a turnover and make them punt. Short punt. Gets a good little roll right there. There we are. I'm telling you, Lawrence County, you know, they've, they've won some games and their defense plays well. And they're hard nosed. Big 72 right there in the middle. He's tough to run against. He's one of the better better kids in the in our district. Yeah, I think Lawrence County would finish five and five, didn't they, or something they, like that? They did, and you know, probably a couple of games away from being win the district. They were double overtime against Columbia the first year and lost, and uh, had Lincoln County beat and lost that game with 20 seconds left. So they've really had one of those seasons where they could be sitting here seven and three, eight and two, and. Here we go. We're getting out these third and long situations. You got to throw, and everybody knows that that's tough, and that's what we've been avoiding the last few weeks. And uh, you know, here early, you know, Lawrence County's playing hard, and we're not, we're not crisp. And like I said last week, it's anytime you go on the road to Lawrence County, it just seems like there's some <laughs> always going to be some issues. And this first quarter, you know, it's a, it's a ball game. Nice punt there by the trail carpenter. Just great job right there by Tony Patterson. There we go. I mean, just making them bounce out. There's just nowhere to run really right there up the middle. And once again, they get in third and long. It's a, it's a tough situation. They do a good job there on third down, making it fourth and short. And All right, the first quarter comes to an end uh, with the. Uh, Shelby be leading seven to nothing. Yeah, well, that's seven to nothing. It's a ball game, and uh, you know we've we knew we weren't going to go down there and they're going to just let us have a have a win. So uh, we need to. We knew at this point in time we we're going to have to play a little better, and uh, we talked to make some adjustments and, and and come out here in the second quarter, and we do play just a little bit better. So you weren't breathing all that easy at this point in the game. No, no, not at all. <laughs> you know, like I said, I've been worried about that game, and uh, you know, I knew Lawrence County got a very good football team, and like I said. Two or three plays throughout the year, they're sitting there. They're they're playing for a district championship, and uh, you know we just we got a fight on our hands. Lawrence County, I believe uh, I didn't notice, but I think they made the playoffs as well. Didn't they, they did. They, they okay, did. so all right, all right. We're going to take a quick break here to acknowledge some of our great sponsors that make this show possible. Stick with us. We'll be right back in just a moment with uh, second quarter action right after this. With over 30 years' experience service in the Tullahoma area, Mike's Tire Brake and Muffler has become a household name in Middle Tennessee. As a family-owned business, Mike and his wife Lisa, along with their sons Jamie, Justin, and Jody, have assembled a crew that delivers quality service to go with quality products. As the only authorized Michelin and Goodyear dealer in Tullahoma, they have become the tire store of choice, being named the Tire and Brake Store of the Year multiple times. They also rent Penske trucks and are an interstate battery dealer. So if you need tires, brakes, mufflers, a battery, or maybe rent a truck, go to the place you can trust. Call Mike's Tire, Brake, and Muffler at 931-455-5150. Located at 732 North Jackson in Tullahoma, Tennessee. J. Jordan Boutique, located at 104 Public Square in Shelbyville, has become the latest choice for shopping. With name brands like Miss Me Jeans, Tops, Purses and Belts, Big Star Jeans, Y'all Los Angeles, Blue Pepper, Umke Junior and Plus Sizes. Not to mention all the other brand fashions in Junior Missy and Plus Size Ladies. Stop by and discover why J. Jordan is the number one ladies apparel shop in the area. Open Monday through Saturday from 9.30 till 5.30. Also visit the newly opened J. Jordan Shop located in the side of Southern Charm across from the Bell Buckle Cafe. You'll be glad you did. 
Get your news first, fast, and free with your news leader on 6 every Tuesday, Thursday, and Saturday nights at 6, 8, and 10 p.m. Local weather, sports, community calendar events, and a comprehensive look at the latest news stories and newsmakers as only a video news broadcast can do. Get it first, fast, and free with news leader on Channel 6, your local information network. W. We're more than just an insulation company. We're also a garage door company and a shelving company and a mirror company and a fireplace company. In fact, if it has to do with the look of your home, 31W's probably that too. Give us a call. Let us give you a free in-home estimate and we'll show you how easily 31W can change the look of your garage, your bathroom, your, well, you get the idea. We've been family owned since 1972, so call 31W today. When you're running late headed to that sporting event or horse show and hungry but need gas, you don't have to choose which to get. Just stop at any quick market where gas prices are normal and the food is outstanding. Burgers, fries, salads, sub sandwiches, chicken strips, egg rolls, even pizza can be picked up while the gas is pumping. Stop by any quick mart today and not only save time but enjoy some good cooking, southern hospitality, and prices you can live with. Moving down into second quarter action. Yeah, come back here on fourth down and they fake a punt and you know we miss a tackle and they're in business here. So defense once again stepping up here on first down for minimal gain. And we knew that we knew they'd take some chances and they come out of the gate right here after the quarter exchange and have a have a fake punt. And, And they put them down here. They're on our side of the side of the football field, and we knew there'd probably be four down territory. And this is a third down play, a little double handoff that we worked worked on all week. And uh, you know, once again, making bounce it out there to our speed guys, and it's hard to outrun some of our guys on the edge there. We've got some pretty good pretty good speed, and uh, put them down that fourth down, do a little double move, and we've got got some good coverage going on. And he throws it a little bit too far downfield. Good draw right here, and here's Michael Eddings breaking a couple tackles and getting five or six. A little too much bouncing right here, and I, I take him out. This is Tyler Eddings, and one of the things we've done all year long is when we've thrown those quick passes, we've we've gotten my, the rule is you're going to get five yards before you start dancing around, and uh, one of the few times he kind of forgot that. Little screen pass, he kind of breaks it the other way. I kind of thought if he went to the right side, he, he had a chance. But uh, good job getting positive yards, but you know, just uh, not enough. And once again, we're having here to punt. And you know, get a good little roll right here, and they go start this drive from the 24, 25 yard line. And come out once again, trying to get the edge on us. Double handoff again, and I mean our kids are there. I mean we got a lot of people in the box and a lot of kids doing their assignments. That's one thing about the wing tee. You start looking for the ball, and next thing you know, they're running by you. Great coverage right here. We've got a, just about everybody covered and good pass rush and makes them throw it early and forcing a punt. It's going to leave you with a pretty good field position here. Yeah, I you know that's uh, that's important. You can get started uh, on on the 45 going in. That's a big difference. And we'll hand off Dallas Castman running the ball hard right there. He needs to get that ball a little closer to the chest, high and tight. But uh, nine yards on the first on the first down play, it makes it a lot easier to call it second down inches play. So and a good read here by Mason and get first down. That's one thing Mason's done a good job of this year, and he's got some pretty good throwing stats, but he's also ran the ball real well. 
Now, it was the same play we ran a while ago. I talked to you, I took him out after, and now we throw it to him and he gets upfield. You know, that's, that's what we need to be doing. Great run, got a lot of offensive linemen. We got a lot of people trying to get in the end zone right there. So big score right there in the second quarter. And once again, too much leakage, and we fix it after this. But uh, good job by Micah Thompson getting the ball through with a little pressure in his face. Castleman was injured last week and apparently is okay this week. He is. He did a good job uh, icing his ankle and kind of took it easy on Monday. But you know, he, he's a tough, hard-nosed kid. And, you know, he's a senior. He taped it up and was ready to play. So a lot of credit to Dallas. I don't think there's any way we was going to talk him out of not playing this game. Lawrence County here kind of going with a different quarterback and kids got some speed back there and just trying to get it and make something happen. And, you know, where there's Tony Patterson again with the play for loss. And our third down and long situation here for them. And just a great job, good break on the ball here. And here, I, what I thought should be a touchdown, I'm sitting there watching the block again. They call a block in the back on Dallas, and uh, you know, I, I see it right there. I don't think it was, didn't think it was last night, and don't think it is today. Yeah. But still a great play by if I, the trail Carpenter there. And we come back and throw the hitch right back to the trail, and he does a good job breaking the tackle and kind of getting a couple more plays and kind of get a stupid penalty right there, a late hit, and puts us behind the chains. And, we run the hitch and then we come back and uh, probably a little too wide on right there. And if we would have been a little bit, a little bit more into the, the middle of the field, I think that right there may go for a touchdown. Did he step out of bounds? Stepped out of bounds and like I said, probably too close to the sidelines. And here's Michael again. Good carry getting the first down. And we got first down and goal to go. Get down here in this situation. We want to be hard nosed. We want to, we want to get the ball in the end zone. It's one of those situations where we're about to run the football, and everybody knows it. Good play right there, but their defensive end. Got to get your feet up right there, Michael. <laughs> Not get ankle tackled. Here's one probably threw it a little bit too far, and just got to give him a chance. I thought it was a good matchup. We got the trail. He's a basketball player, can jump out of the gym and uh, overthrow it just a little bit. And, so I'm to settle for a field goal, but Micah Thompson does a great job putting it through, and that puts us up 17 to nothing. You can see the homecoming floats back there getting ready for halftime here. So it was homecoming for Lawrence County. Oh yeah, and I will say this to Lawrence County fans: uh, they they had some impressive floats. <laughs> great job there by the defensive line. I mean, there's just nowhere to run. I think it was Tamiah's ransom there makes a tackle for a loss. And, uh, Who is your defensive coordinator? Uh, Kyle Turnbow. And uh, oh, that's right. Yeah. Kyle does a great job, and he's he's really really put a, an attitude to this defense about making plays and making tackles, and it is it's one of the big reasons we we turned it around. And uh, he's a hard nosed guy, and he's got the defense the defensive guys believing. Great return here by Tyler, and you know, he was a special teams player of the year last year, and this is one of the few times he's been able to catch the ball. Most people don't kick to him, and when they do, he makes plays happen, and you know, I, I've kind of felt bad for him. Uh, he uh, he gets back there a lot of time, the ball never gets close to him, but uh, there's good reasons for it. Good job of Mason getting out of the pocket right here, and you know, just nothing wrong, nothing wrong with the incomplete pass right here. And Mason's uh, got pretty good speed to the outside there. Yeah, he's a you know, very good athlete. Uh, he plays both sports and or plays two sports, baseball and football. Here's a really good throw and catch, and Malik Trollinger does a great job after the catch getting in the end zone. And a big target for us there, tight end, about 6'2", six, 6'3", six, kid. And we like to, like to get him the ball as much as we can. So much better second quarter right here, as you can see. Uh, That's you know, putting you guys up 24 to nothing, I think. 24 to nothing. 
Not a whole lot of time left right here before half. Kind of make a mistake here on the kickoff and kick it out of bounds, and there's not a whole lot of time left. And come back, run the draw here for about seven or eight yards, but uh, I believe maybe the last play of the half. Okay, twenty-four to nothing. Uh, you're feeling pretty good about things now, I bet. Definitely, you know, I, I, I don't know if we were nervous or what, but the first quarter we didn't play up to, to our standards, and the second quarter. We start making some things happen, settle in a little bit, and you know it's tough to win. I mean, when you hadn't won a district championship in 17, 18 years, you know you've got to, you've got to overcome some adversity, and and our kids did that out in the first quarter and the second quarter started playing normal and settled down, and uh, that's why we're at 20 more to nothing. The, the kids probably were well aware of the fact that you guys hadn't won a district championship in that long. Yeah, you know. Uh, a lot, of, a lot of people around town, and it's great when you have excitement, but the other thing is, you know, you got parents and, and other people talking about uh, it's a big game, it's a big game, and as a coach, you don't want to ever put too much pressure on it being a big game, And uh, but, but they still hear it, and they read the paper, they know what's going on, and uh, they knew what was at stake, and little butterflies I think we had, and uh, but, but settled down, and, and you know, at halftime, I felt that our kids were really confident now in playing the football like we have been. I would imagine, and you can probably uh, comment on that based on your experience in, uh, in football, it's after you get hit a few times and things kind of get settled down out there a little bit and you start oh, focusing yeah. on the best thing, the best thing you can do in football is uh, go out there and get get knocked upside the head or <laughs> get some get the butterflies knocked out of you. It makes, uh, it makes all those things you've been thinking about just go out the window and you just concentrate on football. Yeah. That's the way it should be. All right. Okay, we're going to take a moment to acknowledge our sponsors. We'll be right back in just a moment with Second Half Action. Are you hungry for some really good food? Visit the Huddle House in Shelbyville, Tennessee for some of the best food any hour, every hour. From the breakfast items to the evening steaks and seafood, the Huddle House in Shelbyville gives you a complete line of great meals and you'll always be greeted with a smile and come on in. Visit the Huddle House located at 1209 North Main Street in Shelbyville. For carryout orders, call them at 931-685-0082. 31W Insulation offers custom look garage doors to enhance the appearance of your home. These are beautiful, durable, and energy efficient doors. Give your home the fresh, classic, distinctive look it deserves. From rural to rustic artistry, 31W Insulation has what you're looking for. Visit us online at 31W.com to see how we can make beautiful and affordable improvements to your home. In 1983, Kenneth Western had a dream of owning a car lot with his son, Eric, helping clients find that great ride at an affordable price. Today, that dream is reality. Clients get that affordable price with weekly and bi-weekly payments. Taking both debit and credit cards, they have opened the door for you to get that great ride at an affordable price. Stop by 1301 Madison Street in Shelbyville or visit them on the internet at www.westernauto.com. Need directions? Call 931-684-4731. Remember, for that great ride at an affordable price with easy payments, visit Kenneth Western Automotive and talk to Kenneth or Eric today. Side kick right there to start the half, start the half off. Uh, we talked about it at halftime. Uh, be ready for anything, and they 
they had an onside kick and O.J. Davis ready up there and making the play. We talk every week about coming out and playing well in the first first five minutes of the third quarter and uh, you know I always thought as a coach that's very important for your team to come out after halftime and play well and uh, get a penalty here right there off the bat and that's you know stuff we can't can't happen. And, uh, a little penalty right there gets us behind the chains and you know anytime you're third and long it doesn't matter if you can throw the ball or not it, it makes it tough and couldn't really come back uh, and make that play right there as a well-thrown ball and gave us a chance but just couldn't hold on to it so we come out with a three and out and that's not what we want to see after halftime but uh, good job on the punt again got Sente Muse right there a little sophomore really doing a good job covering kicks for us uh, Tony Patterson again Tony Patterson he's our, our Mike linebacker but when we go to a run dominant team we will put him down at nose guard a lot of times and he can play a little bit of defensive line and and linebacker and he had a he had a great night Friday night and they've been running the double handoff this time they fake it and our kids very disciplined stay at home and that makes you proud as, as a coach to see uh, kids doing what they're they're supposed to be doing and not trying to make every play Short punt right here. You know, not not bad field position. Good keep right here and good run by Mason. You know, I think that element we got the quarterback. To, to me, a, a running quarterback makes it a lot tougher. Certainly puts a lot of more pressure on that defense to cover that as well. Definitely, you know. You know, those quarterbacks that just sit back and hand it off all the time. I always thought defensively it's a lot easier to to uh, the game plan for those guys. When Mason's done a great job. Here's a really good run by Michael Eddings and a good stiff arm there at the end to get five more yards. Do you think he was face mask or something? I think he thought he, uh, they got him by the face mask uh, earlier in the game there. He, Probably did get a horse collar tackle that wasn't called, and he's running hard. You know, he's got a lot of talent. Just a sophomore, and he's one of those kids. I think uh, he's improved so much from his freshman year to his sophomore year. He's a guy early in the year we we didn't give him a lot of carries, and he's just come come along. And right now he's our leading rusher, and so got a lot of speed, and a lot of athletic ability, and hopefully he just continues to get better. And 72 right here. We had a little quarterback draw going on. And 72 for Lawrence County, very good football player. And like I, I think I said it earlier, I think he's one of the top top kids in the district. Had a little double move here, and you know, looked to me like they kind of held him, but uh, probably throw it. Well, at least we throw it to where we can catch it, and if they intercept it, they're out of bounds. So have to settle for a field goal. But once again, Jacob Davidson snapping to Zeke Mason, and Micah Thompson puts it through. And anytime you can. Finish a drive with points on the board, whether it's three or seven, it's a it's a good drive. Your field goal kicking has been uh, a pretty positive thing for you too, as well. It, it has, and uh, you know it's <laughs> we uh, it's not funny, but we played Giles County, we missed five extra points, so to come back and hit every extra point and and a couple of field goals makes you feel a lot better. So <laughs> same kicker, same kicker, you same know kicker. he he's a sophomore as well, you know he. He missed the extra point at Tullahoma, uh, you know, and ended up kind of being a big play. And he's worked hard, and he's a lot more steady, and, and just getting better each week. Uh, just another great play. I'm telling you, Tony Patterson is 52 right there. It's, he's made already four or five tackles for loss, and he's, like I said, that's a linebacker going down playing nose guard, and he's he's a hard nosed kid. Having a great game. Force on the punt right here again. They come up here with a little bit different formation. Come back here and gonna try to try to fake one right here. You got a guy coming out and do a good job, Michael there covering him. And 
have to take off running and, and they're short. So we knew, like I said, we knew they'd have to take chances in the second half with our lead and they faked it and we stayed at home and played very disciplined football right there. Looks like the mark of a well-coached team. Well, we, you know they're listening when you're not trying to do too much. And uh, right there, really good football, uh, really good th thrown football. And uh, Tyler, I think, is trying to run before he caught it. Dallas here. Now, here's the difference in the first half and second half. He's running upfield. And, you know, there's a kid that's a senior. He's wanting to get in the end zone right there. He, he never does never does go down. So, great run by Dallas. And, you know. 230 pounds, and he just keeps on running forward. I mean, he's, he's, a, he's a load. You know, it's, it's nice when you don't have to get tricky and you can just run right up, up the gut and uh, get in the end zone. That's, that's kind of the power of football I like to see. And, you know, I think a lot of people kind of look at us sometimes as we throw the ball a little bit and think we're kind of finesse. But, you know, we got inside the, the 20 the last few weeks. We've really done a great job of power football and getting it in his own. So that puts you up 41 to nothing, I think. Is that correct? Or uh, that it's, 30, it's 34 to nothing right now. 34 to uh -huh. nothing, okay. And it's to brag it on Mike and his kicking, and he kind of flubs this one and misses it and gives him, uh, gives him the ball at the 45. We kind of knew they had the ball at midfield. They're probably going to have four downs to get a first down. and. Yeah, defensively we hadn't given up very much, and they're out here, and you can see them pointing and communicating and talking before the play. And you know, I think uh, Coach Turnbull had a, had a great game plan in for defense. And here's probably a fumble. We thought uh, we thought last night it was a fumble, scoop and score right there, but uh, they they blew it dead. But been nice to see one big defensive yes, lineman getting in. Yeah. On. <laughs> and I bet he'd have been tickled as well. <laughs> oh, he would have never forgot about it. And hold them here to third and long and come back with a little counter play and great job by the defense right there, Will Drawn. There was just nothing there. They, they, they just totally had that cover. Force a punt. And I think this is the one he kind of gets off pretty good and it hits and uh, kind of kicking away from us and good roll. So that's, that's a really good, good punt and puts us down inside the 10. Good positive yards on first down, and that's kind of what we've been talking to these running backs about is uh, getting positive yards on first down now. Avoid the negative plays. Right. But you got to be feeling pretty com uh, comfortable about that. So you've been through three quarters. You're going into the fourth quarter. Another score puts you probably substituting if you're not already. Yeah, we, we come down on this drive right here, and uh, we want to get out of a hole, but we start playing some younger guys here on this drive and end up scoring. And... Uh, you know, it, it's it's a very positive drive here. They played pretty well, and this fourth quarter, I think we do a good job of capping off a good night. Okay. Uh, one quick thing I want to do here now. A lot, a, a lot of times we get some of the ladies watching these football games, and they don't know what we're talking about. So you mentioned your Mike linebacker a moment ago. Tell us what a Mike linebacker is. Well, a Mike linebacker, that's just your, your middle linebacker. We play we play a 4-3 defense, meaning we have four four linemen okay. uh, and, and then three guys behind them, which are the three linebackers. And uh, out of those three, the Mike is, is the middle one. Okay. And, uh, you know, he's... Tony Patterson is the young man, and uh, he's done a great job, but uh, a little football one-on-one -on -one, uh, one -on -one there. Uh, okay. So uh, that's what the Mike linebacker is. He's the middle linebacker of the three in our in our 4-3 defensive scheme. So. Okay. All right. <laughs> All right. So there's a little football information for you, a little preview for you. All right. We're going to take a moment to acknowledge our sponsors again. We'll be right back in a moment with the fourth quarter. Have you heard that little voice that beckons you to come home to Tennessee? Well, here's your chance. Here's a property offered by its owner. It's 20 miles from the National Walking Horse Celebration Grounds in Shelbyville, Tennessee, and only 10 minutes away from the Jack Daniel Distillery in Lynchburg. It's located at 769 Shipman Creek Road. This property has over a 5,300 square foot home on 45 acres, and a sprawling 200 acres is also available. Let's take a look at the house. Built 
built in 1998, this home has four bedrooms and three and a half baths. This home offers wide open views, featuring the main floor with over 2,700 square feet of living room, an eat-in kitchen, a formal dining area, and a massive 20 by 19 master bedroom with a master bath and fireplace included. There is craftsmanship at every turn, solid cherry cabinets, built-in cherry shelves, and other solid cherry appointments. It's a two-story home with three nicely sized bedrooms upstairs. Down a spiral staircase, the basement hosts a 40 by 40 den with a handcrafted bar. We're leaving the jukebox here, folks. The basement is a recreation room on steroids. There are too many closets to count and more than you'll ever need. There are so many places in this home to find peace that you'll seldom want to leave it. But when you do, you'll discover up to 200 acres of paved roads with city water. The property is quilted with streams, woods, ponds, and open pasture. The view from the porch alone is enough to say your home. The property includes a three bay heavy construction shop and plenty of room to build stables and graze livestock. If Tennessee's been calling you home, start your journey by calling this number. A property like this comes on the market but once in a lifetime. We think you'll love it, we think you'll stay. This is a very real estate. The team's taking the field. Not many people. Oh, my. He missed. Uh, off to a rough start here. Somebody wants to go home. What's he doing? If you're not watching college football in HD, you're watching Pee Wee TV. Graduate to Charter TV in HD and let it all in. All right, we're back now, starting the uh, fourth quarter. Yeah, this is the drive, you know, starts inside your 15-yard line, and you've got a good lead. It's one of those ones you want to just kind of milk the clock. And one of those situations we talk about all the time, I mean, that's where everybody knows what you're trying to do, and you still got to execute and do it well. And, you know, those are tough yards right there. Uh, Clock is running at this point, uh, Coach. Or it's uh, we're one point away from it right here. So good little screen right here to O.J. Davis, and uh, that's a big first down. Third and third and about eleven, or third and about ten, and do a good job picking up about fifteen. And here's a uh, Tyler Bailey, young man's a backup running back, backup quarterback, and comes in. That's a really good run, and uh, we're trying to get a few guys in at a time here. And, Trying to get him some carries. He's he's played the whole JV year as as a backup quarterback, but he's probably one of our top three or four running backs as well. And next year we'll we'll really need him. And uh, here's another sophomore right here is a number one Sente Muse, and he's doing a good job getting positive yards. Tyler Bailey again. It's good to see some of those young running backs that they work hard during the week and they kind of get in here and get some carries at the at the end of the game. And uh, you know, going against the first team defense there. <laughs> Our Sente, who's had a good night, but you're 120 pounds and you're running your own player fall down a little bit. And here, here's a play. If he goes to the left, I think he's in the end zone. <laughs> he's running hard, but he's kind of running in the wrong direction right there. But a good job getting up there and getting us, I guess, third and short. This little quick option play right there. It's a run pass option. Do a good job of getting the ball out to, and getting getting positive yards. Here's one's not real smart on our quarterback. Probably shouldn't have. Should have just gave it right there at this point in time. At least he does a good job getting down and, and sliding. And uh, as the last play for him, we want to get Tyler Buddy some some running back time. And now we've got him at quarterback, and he hands off to Sente Muse. And good to see Sente get in the end zone. He's played the last three, get four games in the fourth quarter, and got some tough yards, and hadn't found the end zone. So that's his first touchdown. 
I think all the kids were excited for him. I bet he was tickled. So now we've got the running clock. It's 41 to nothing. And, uh, you know, we're going to come back here on the defense side of the ball. And we're playing, going to play a lot of young players. That's our backup kicker, kicking that extra point, and the, and the kickoff, Jose Pichardo. So good to see him get in the game. You can see here it's a little bit different with these guys. and uh, They played hard all week and get a chance to get in the game. And the discipline's not, not nearly there like it was with the first group and uh, giving up a couple big plays right there. But, you know, hopefully they'll learn from that experience. And they're playing hard. Just not playing real smart. And when you're sitting there all week and these guys are, are, are the scout team, they're running Lawrence County stuff and they hadn't had a really a chance to to work on the on things. Really good catch by number seven right here. We've got two or three guys there and <laughs> you know we just gotta go make that play and that could have probably been the ball game right there if we pick it off. You know. One thing we have done, we've got young guys in here, but they're playing against the you know, first team offense. Mm -hmm. That's the first team tailback and quarterback and line, and uh, can't get better, better uh, quality playing time than that. And a uh, little double move, and once again, got two young guys there. And it's probably one of those plays you'd rather see him just tackle him instead of giving up the touchdown. But uh, they go for two here, and uh, our guys get pressure on him. They've got a guy out there and just kind of under underthrew him a little bit. So. You're probably right there, Coach. A penalty wouldn't have been all that bad there. Would it? <laughs> exactly right. Here you go. Try a little onside kick, and he kicks a little bit too far, and that kind of wraps up the game. Okay. All right. Big win, uh, 41 to 7? 41 to 6, yeah. 41 to 6. 41 to 6. And, uh, of course, that propels uh, uh, the Golden Eagles into the first round of the playoffs at home this week against. Tullahoma, who you played earlier this year. Oh, yeah. You know, good draw as far as getting a home playoff game. Tough draw getting a, a district opponent. And, uh, you know, those first round get matchups. Everybody, no matter what you are, we've been in, we've come in at 5-5 five and five or 6-4 and four before in playoffs, and it doesn't matter really what your records are because they're all thrown out the window and everybody's on an even playing field. And, you know, we had one loss in the district this year, and it was to, to Tullahoma, and it uh, uh, could be good or bad. Um, the good news is you'd think our kids wouldn't take much motivation. Uh, mm -hmm. Hopefully they're going to be up and ready to play and hope we'll have a good crowd. But uh, anytime you play a district opponent, I think, in the first round of the playoffs, you know each other so well that it, it, it's really tough. Yeah, because you, you've already played them before. And, that, and, then, and when you and uh, you and Tullahoma played before, it was, uh, what, 36-33. Mm -hmm. So it was a very close game, and it was decided in the last few minutes of the game, I believe. It was, and that was one of those games that you sit back afterwards and say, well, you know, this this would have happened and that would have happened. And, you know, it, the only thing about it being a matchup, uh, it, it was earlier in the season. So, obviously, we're a different team, and, and you know, Tullahoma was a different team. And so... You know, we're going to have to go back and really game plan each other because uh, six, seven weeks went by. You're not playing the same team. Um, but, you know, great rival between Tullahoma and Shevel. They're on border towns. And uh, Coach Olive and his staff will have that team ready. And, you know, we've got our hands full. Okay. And uh, probably it's going to be a big fan favorite, too, as well, because uh, it's not very far away from home for Tullahoma. And, uh, uh, fans from both sides, I'm sure, are going to be excited about that. Well, I, I hope so. I hope there's a big crowd from, you know, obviously Shovel, but, uh, you know, I hope Tullahoma brings a great crowd in. Uh, one thing you can say about high school playoffs is that you know, it's a great atmosphere, and, and we want a we want a great atmosphere out of Shovel Friday night. And uh, you know, I hope I hope everybody comes out and supports both these teams. You know, these kids work hard, and uh, whoever you're rooting for, they they've put a lot of time and effort in it. And you know, it's win or go home time now, so it's just really exciting. I'd have to think your team is is probably about where you'd like it to be right now, though, because you've uh, you've improved immensely on defense uh, and, and are playing lights out on defense and scoring a lot of points as well. And your team is healthy. Uh, that's probably where you'd like to be right now. Yeah, I mean, I couldn't probably script it any better as far as we're playing as good as we did all year at the right time. And uh, you know, hopefully that 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 pattern keeps on going. Uh, there's all, all kinds of scenarios when you come into the end of the year, and being healthy, number one, is, is huge. And uh, number two, playing good, solid football. And I think this game that we've shown right here is our, our kids 
a lot of little things like staying at home on defense and covering kicks and, and those type of things that goes a long way and I'm very very happy with where we are and uh, hopefully we can keep it up going into this uh, playoff season. Nope. All right. Again, uh, the Golden Eagles end the regular season at 7-3, and three, a big playoff game coming up this weekend, folks, with uh, Tullahoma. So we hope all you fans will turn out from both towns. Uh, an exciting, exciting weekend coming up. Coach, congratulations on a great season. Thank you. I appreciate right. it. And we'll see you again next Saturday with the Golden Eagles football show, folks. Hope you'll join us in. Bye-bye.